air humidification. When it comes to any forced air heating system, one of the common complaints that mechanics may run into, you know, during the winter months is a, a customer complaining that the air is too dry. Uh, you know, static electricity, they got the, the a dry nose, yeah, you know, just uncomfortable. So a lot of things that can happen is the warm air actually dries the the air out in the space. And what I mean by drying it out, it removes humidity from that air. So as a mechanic, we need to make up for that humidity that may be um, dissipated from the, the furnace itself. So that thing really just comes into air quality. Okay, Remember, we're HVAC. We are concerned with the quality of air that is within a space. Okay, The quality of air movement in an environment is very, very important to the HVAC industry. If the air is too dry, the air environment can become a health hazard. If it's too humid, we can produce dangerous mold. Now remember, mold is a plant. It's a member of the fungi family. It is one of the catalysts responsible for the breakdown of organic matter. However, we have a bunch of different molds out there. Okay, the spores can become airborne, they can be inhaled, it can reduce very bad health effects. Okay, actually there's probably about 100,000 different species of mold that we, that can be found. Okay, according to the CDC, the most common species of mold in the U.S. are as listed here. <clears throat> okay, uh, molds can create different types of health factors, one of them being uh, sick building syndrome. Uh, sick building syndrome can, is simply caused from the mold spores being airborne and then breathing it in, getting into a person's lungs and making them very, very, very sick. So what we want to do is try to control the amount of relative humidity in a space. Okay, so in the fall and winter months, homes are dry because cold air from the outside enters the home. This air is artificially dried out when, the heat, when it is heated because the air expands, and this expansion spreads out your moisture. So the amount of moisture in the air is always expressed in, in relative humidity. Relative humidity is the percentage of moisture in the air in comparison with a, the specific capacity of the air to hold that moisture. So basically what we're trying to say here in simple terms, if the relative humidity is 50%, each cubic foot of air is holding half the moisture that it is capable of holding. So when we say that something is 100% humidity, it's raining out. The air can no longer hold the moisture. The relative humidity of the air decreases as the temperature of the air increases because the hotter air, the more humidity it can hold. Dry, warm air draws moisture from everything in the conditioned space, including your carpets, your furniture, any woodworking that you have in there, your plants, people. Okay, static electricity is also more prevalent when you have dry air. So in order to prevent this, the air needs to have its moisture replenished. Now in HVAC, it is really recommended that we try to keep our relative humidity in our homes anywhere between 40 and 60%. You know, studies have shown that bacteria, viruses, fungi are all active when the relative humidity is above or below these limits. Okay, now, air humidification. Years ago, 
in order to humidify a home, people placed a pan of water on top of a radiator or stove. And when it boiled off, the water vapor went into the air and it raised the humidity. The steam from the boiling water would evaporate into the air, raising the relative humidity in the air. And since that time, more efficient ways of humidifying a home have become out simply by installing humidifiers. Humidifiers produce moisture and make it available to the air by evaporation. The evaporating process is accelerated by using power or heat or bypassing air over a large area of water. The area of water can be increased by spreading it over pads or by atomization. So here we have an evaporative humidifier. Okay, the evaporative humidifier works on the principle of providing moisture on a surface called media and exposing it to dry air. This is normally done by forcing the air through or around the media and picking up the moisture from the media as a vapor or a gas. Here we have a bypass humidifier and this simply all does relies on the difference in pressure between the supply and return air size of your ductwork. Okay, these types of humidifiers can be mounted on either the supply or the return air plenum. When we're piping these types of units, the pipe must be run from the plenum or duct where the humidifier is mounted to the other plenum. The pressure difference between the two ducts creates airflow through the humidifier and this air is distributed throughout the house. Now usually when you see these types of fern, uh, humidifiers on a natural gas furnace, they're probably going to be uh, most likely mounted on the supply uh, duct simply because we want to use the positive side of the blower to push the water vapor through the ductwork and into all of the spaces in the home. You may also run into these types of plenum mounted humidifiers. Okay, these types of humidifiers are going to be mounted on the supply or the return plenum. The, for, the furnace fan forces air through the media where the air picks up that moisture and the air and moisture are then distributed throughout the conditioned space. You can have under, uh, under mount type humidifiers and these guys are going to be mounted on, on the underside of the supply duct so that the media expands into the airflow where the moisture is picked up and then distributed. Okay, humidifiers are always are available in a lot of different designs with various types of media. So in this picture here is the under duct humidifier using a disc screen media. The disc screen is mounted on a rotating shaft that allows them to pick up moisture from the reservoir. The discs are separated to prevent electrolytis, which causes the minerals in the water to form on the media. Okay, the wobble from the disc mounted at an angle washes the minerals off and into the reservoir. Okay, the minerals can be then drained from that reservoir. Here you actually will have either a plate or a pad media. These are basically the same type of thing. The airstream in the duct causes the water to evaporate from the wick or the plates. Here we have an electric furnace uh, or heat pump installation. Okay, the temperature of the air in the duct is not as high as that in other types of hot air furnaces. So the electrically heated humidifier heats the water with an electric heat element causing it to evaporate and can be carried into the conditioned space. Another type of humidifier that is out there is your infrared humidifier. Okay, this type of humidifier is mounted in the duct and has infrared lamps with reflectors to reflect the infrared energy onto the water. The water will evaporate rapidly into the duct airstream and is carried throughout the conditioned space. So how do we control our humidifiers? Do we just let them run wild and rampant and just never shut off? No. We have to be able to shut them off when the humidity reaches a particular level. And in order to do that, we install a humidistat.
Okay, the humidistat, just like it says, it monitors humidity. Okay, the humidistat controls the motor or the heating element inside your humidifier, and humidifiers may be included included in a digital thermostat or some sort of DDC control. So this type of humidistat here is all it is is a simple Honeywell uh, humidistat. All you would do is just turn that little dial to uh, what setting you want your humidity to be and let it go. Like again, for most residential settings, it's anywhere between 40 and 60 percent. Uh, atomizing humidifiers display water droplets into the air. Uh, which evaporate rapidly into the duct airstream or directly into the conditioned space. These humidifiers can be spray nozzle or centrifugal type. Atomizing humidifiers should not be used with hard water because it contains minerals that leave the water vapor as dust and are distributed throughout the house. Atomizing humidifier should operate only when the furnace is operating or moisture will accumulate and cause corrosion and mildew. The spray nozzle humidifier spray water through a metered bore of a nozzle into the airstream, which distributes them to the occupied space. The centrifugal humidifier uses an impeller or a sling to throw the water and break it into particles that are evaporated into the airstream. Pneumatic atomizing uh, systems use air pressure to break up water into a mist of tiny droplets and then disperses them. So when we are thinking about a lot of humidifiers and what we need to do, there's a couple of criteria that we should probably think about when it comes to sizing your humidifiers. Okay, Now some of these here is just basically nothing more than a generalization. Uh, there is some other calculations that you do if you want to get a little more accurate size of what a humidifier you're going to use. But here are just some simple guidelines that you can use to kind of get you in the ballpark. Obviously, we need to know the number of cubic feet of space that we need to humidify. Uh, this is determined by multiplying the number of heated square feet of the house by the ceiling height. So for example here, you have a 1,500 square foot house with 8 foot ceilings that has about 12,000 cubic feet of space that's going to need to be humidified. Uh, knowing the construction of the home, the type of insulation, building tightness, windows and all that stuff is also good to know uh, when it comes to sizing your humidifiers. Uh, the amount of air changes per hour and the approximate lowest outdoor air temperature should also be calculated into that and obviously the level of relative humidity that is desired for that particular space. Now when it comes to servicing, troubleshooting, and preventative maintenance on your humidifiers, usually it's going to come down to an electrical issue or a component that is actually locked up or seized because of mineral buildup. Uh, locked conditions can cause a thermal overload protector to cut out. So obviously we're going to check for all of our overload protections, our circuit breakers, we're going to check our humidistat, we're going to check our voltages to make sure that there is any, if anything at all. Uh, you're going to check whether or not the motor is burned out by simply ohming them out. And you're going to clean and disinfect all of the components. Uh, if you have excessive dust because of dirty ductwork, that's going to also cause buildup on the media. You need to clean or replace the media anytime you're doing a service or maintenance on a humidifier. Excessive dust occurs in an atomizing humidifier. The wrong equipment can also be installed. Water flow issues. Uh, you may have a defective float valve assembly. Sometimes all you need to do if you have a water flow or an overflow issue, you're going to clean or adjust it or simply replace it. Uh, moisture in or around the ductwork. Uh, this can happen uh, with atomizing humidifiers. You're going to check the control to see if it operates at other times, such as during our cooling modes. It could possibly be wired wrong. Uh, you can have a restricted airflow, which can also cause the problem. Low or high humidity levels, uh, you're going to check the calibration of the humidistat using a sling psychrometer. Uh, if they are out of calibration, uh, you can either try to adjust it or simply replace 
the humidistat. Okay, you're going to also make sure ensure that the humidifier is clean and operating properly. 